Hi there, uh, let's start on uh, with this uh, the third tutorial. Just go to the um, the tutorial folder, open the last one, the one called Enemy, Tutor uh, Enemy Movement, uh, which I call the last file, I believe. Open that one and let's get started. So we need now to uh, add attacking and that's the thing. This tutorial is about how we can implement attacking. We do it the exact same way as we did with um, um, with moving, uh, moving. So we're having an, a movement phase first, and then you have an attack phase afterwards. That's that's the way we can do it. We can do it different ways, and all the ways are possible. But this is just the one way that I think is really cool for. Uh, I think it's something like a tablet the game, a game for tablet or a game for. Uh, where you can just like click and move around, and it's not too complicated. Having uh, the ability to both move and attack can be really good. Um, but you can do it differently if you want to and I can show you that if you need like an, a different way of doing it but this is the way that I want to do it in this tutorial at least so if you don't want an attack phase uh, and the move phase separately then don't do this tutorial I guess uh, but you can just in some way uh, implement it into the the move phase uh, if you want but let's do it the let's get started here so this is the uh, the last file I just opened here and go to the player and for the player object, sorry, the player object here, we have some different value rules. And so we will set like, uh, let's call this one attack mode. And let's make it, uh, first of all, let's make it melee. That's the easiest way to do it. So the thing here will be that we will have melee or ranged as our two different options. And this is just because it's really easy to say he's melee or ranged. If I use like zero or one or two or something like that, it's just... You know, you need to remember that zero means melee and one means range and something. So it's easy just to use a word, and the word range is really easy to to uh, to remember. So let's just remember that, that it's called attack mode. So what happens now is that when we are done uh, moving in the in this step event, when we're done moving, we 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 can take the next turn. But instead of doing that, we need to set alarm one to one. So now we execute alarm one here, which means that for alarm one, something basically similar to this. And so we can say that, um, let's just say, what what is it uh, for the path object? I'm just doing this right away. Let's say alarm, alarm two is the one that is, uh, is, uh, is unoccupied, right? So let's just say alarm two, and let's just say that the other ID is this one, and the movement is not really important. Uh, alarm two. Right for the uh, path object, so go for the path uh, path general object, and say alarm two. I think we can copy paste the alarm zero code thing here. Can we do that? Blah 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 blah. Um, ah yeah, of course. Okay, so this one is called if. First of all, if place meeting, if place meeting x y, this if the path meets the object enemy general, right, equals to true, then we will execute this entire thing. Otherwise, we will not. And of course, it should not be can move. It should be can attack instead. Can attack. Let's call it can attack. Can attack. Can attack. Can attack. And we need to initialize this value, so we need to put it in here. Can attack. Yep. Okay. Cool. So let's go back. Can attack is equal to false because we need to set it to false always. And then we, we will try to determine the distance. And so that if if we melee, if other ID dot attack mode equals to melee, then this is the one thing that will execute it. Else can attack equals to true. Because otherwise we will always be able to attack if we have range, right? So um, good. I think that is it. So if we meet an enemy and if we are melee, then we need to check that the distance is less than 100 because then it's melee range, it's just one space. And if not, if we are ranged, I just put it here that this is for the range, then we will be able to attack regardless, right? So what happens now is, let's say that uh, can attack, let's say left press, let's say um, if can attack is equal to true, then let's say that for other ID dot target equals to instance nearest this point. We could also use another uh, object, enemy general. General, right, good. Um, and 
We can just copy paste the shit I believe. Yup. With uh, list just that is not really. But we just need to put away these uh, can attack. I said can attack equals default. So we reset all the different path objects, and then we say for other ID, other ID dot alarm alarm two. It must be right. Alarm two is vacant. Alarm two equals to one. Um. And we reset everything here, and this is the target, and we have this value is already initialized, right? Uh, yeah. So let's the target is the one thing that we need now. So we go for the uh, uh, the player general, and the, it doesn't have the target, so we just make a target here, target equals to zero, and then we go for alarm two. We go for alarm two, and then we say um, sprite index equals to sprite attack. Image speed, let's just say, image. that is the one thing you can just uh, tweak around as you want. 0 0.5, then say image index equals to 0, so it's the first in, the first image in the in the file we will, we will see. And then let's say that alarm 3, the next alarm, equals to image number times 2. Because we have half, we have the half speed here. So we need to have the image numbers of the sprite, which is like 3 images in, at a half speed. You know, that is like six images. You get the point, right? It's, it's basic math. And so we copy paste, so we can have an attack animation. Let's just say, this is only for attack animation. This is only this is the only reason we have this, is for attack animation. And so we say alarm three, yep, alarm three. So for alarm three, uh, let's say sprite walk, let's say zero. And let's say that is it, and then say alarm 11 equals to, let's say 30 seconds, I think. Uh, um, that is like one second cooldown. And so he need to, we, we will take damage. But I don't think we have any damage yet. So we need to add all the damage stuff. But the, the, the basic thing is that, let's just say something like, okay, we need to do this first, of course, and then we need to, to do this. So uh, uh, that this means damage in my language, scale. It's called scale. Okay, scale equals to, uh, let's say damage minimum plus uh, round random damage maximum right and then say target dot uh, HP let's just use non Danish values uh, whatever I want to use this because this means uh, HP like health in Danish we cannot write health because health is a value inside game maker itself so we need to use something else uh, minus equal uh, yeah, that's the thing. And then we can make like a thing that shows it, but we can do that uh, afterwards. So let's go and put all these different values, uh, also the sprite walk and sprite uh, attack uh, into the player here. So let's say damage minimum and damage max. Let's just say he deals the 10 to 20 damage because then it will be like he'll deal, he'll deal, you know, he'll deal 10 plus something like 10. So up to 10, right? Uh, up to 10 equals 10 to 20 damage that's how that's how we do it okay uh, it's just really easy for you to understand so what we need to do now is adding adding the sprite I need it needs to go fast because I don't have I don't have like a 15 minutes to do the video sprite walk and we had sprite attack I think sprite attack SP what is it called sprite one equals to sprite one you can see the sprite one because it's over here right uh, right now, it's, it's, it's there is no real animation, but there will be if you if you swap sprites around, just uh, you know change this stuff. Um, and let's go and see sprite walk. Let's just say that we have a walking sprite. So let's say that for object player that the sprite index equals to sprite walk, and then say that image speed equals to zero and image index equals to zero. Right. Then say that if we're moving, and this is if you want to have a um, uh, moving, uh, let's just say that this would be the thing. Let's say 0 0.3, so that is like 33% of the, the animation. This means that when you're moving, you will have the sprite walk will be executed. Let's just make sure that everybody understands it. Sprite index equals to sprite walk, but it's always sprite. Oh no, I don't, we don't need to do that. It, it is always going to be the sprite walk. So. For alarm three, sprite index to sprite walk. For alarm two, we show the animation of attacking sprite attack. And so we deal damage. And we need ah, oh, we need to add this value. Okay, cool. So right now let's just add it for the enemy. So the enemy will have a max HP. 
and the max HP is called uh, Leo Max. Let's say he has 100 HP. And so we go to the, uh, the, the general object and say that the variable HP will be equal to HP Max. Let's just say that this is equal to, so everybody understands it, right? I always use this vari variable, so it's really weird for me not using it. So, uh, and this means that, oh, let's just do this for, for the test, uh, the test uh, testing purposes. Let's say that if HP is below one, which means it's zero or less, instance destroy. Uh, do we have time to add like a, yeah, we do actually have some time for that. So let's say let's add let's add another sprite and call it sprite bar, and let's make it uh, ten times ten, and let's make two images and make this one uh, green. To uh, yeah, I like to use the gradients. I think this looks great. We could just just not use the gradients, but and make the other one like red into some red stuff. So the first image needs to be green, and the next one needs to be that looks weird. Or whatever. And the next one needs to be um, red and then non-transparent make it non-transparent sprite bar all right so let's say for the uh, this guy here then let's say that the draw sprite sprite index times minus one times one by one yes and then draw if uh, his HP is less than his maximum HP which means if he has taken damage at all um, we can also just now let's just show it regardless. So and make the stretch sprite. Where's the stretched sprite? The stretch sprite, and let's say that's gonna be sprite bar uh, point zero. Oh, uh, point one first. First we need to show the last image, and let's say that we will have the sprite bar above our enemy object. So let's say how is it, is it hundred times hundred? So let's say minus forty times minus. Let's just say minus 45, 40, whatever. I have 50, whatever. It's going to be good anyway. 55, whatever, something like that. And then 40 times 40, like, because it's minus 40 from the x value. So 80 times, so it needs to be 80 in, in, in the y. It'll all make sense when you see it. And then let's say 10 in height. And then let's say that, oh yeah, we need to add this because uh, he cannot. We cannot have the. There's a problem if we do it with. Um, just do it like this. It's gonna be fine. Okay, cool. And then this needs to be the first image. If you do it like this, it should all be fine. So this means that right now the only thing that ha that can happen is that the player can attack if he's within melee range. And if not, let's just say that you're not. And this let's just say that that's what's happening. Um, let's say that attack phase if, you, if what if the player is unable to attack that is the problem at the moment So let's just say that the player is ranged because we will just come to that in a moment But let's just say that the player the player is ranged just so you can see that this is actually working, right? Okay, cool No, should I save it? Oh, I'm, I'm retarded. Oh, that was really very really stupid I need to save as a new one. I just fucked up the entire tutorial. Oh, I'm so sorry because people are downloading from this one. Enemy, let's just say player attacking. Player attacker. I'm really sorry, that was a, that was a big mistake. Um, that's really wrong of me. Player attacking. Let's just execute the file and see if it works. It's probably, maybe there will be some errors, who knows? Who knows? But it should, it should be fine, right? It should be fine. Right, so this guy has some HP now and we can move towards him and when we have moved, we should be able to attack him, yeah. And we did, yay, we did some damage to him between 10 to, to 20 damage. Um, we need, to, of course, we need to have like a, it displaying in red that actually we are able to. So we can move and attack. And he moves. Um, let's just quickly, in like the last, uh, we have the last minute. Right, so what we should add here is that we should go to the object path general and remove this uh, thing here to be like uh, the, the first thing to draw. And then we'll draw everything else on top of it so that we can draw this if attack is equal to true It will be red so we can see if we are able to attack. That is the last thing I want to add here um, for this simple tutorial. So um, God, let's just see that I hope everything works as it should please Please Yeah, we able to move and now it's red because we can attack him attacking deal 10 to 20 damage um yeah 
So at the moment, the enemy cannot attack, but that's the thing in the next one. 